Welcome. This is the November 5th Jalen Zones production user call. We have Matthias, DCH, Carlo, Dan, Dennis, Anshanik, myself, Michael. And yes, there has been a time change. Sorry about that. That is way above my pay grade. I couldn't change it. Thank you, everyone <clears throat> who participated in the Open ZFS user and developer summit. That was awesome. And coming up this weekend, there is the uh, did you? Oh, you hit the link. Uh, there is the event in the Netherlands, the BSD NL. There is the Scale Conference in Seattle. Oh. No, the Seagull, rather. Scales LA, Seagull Conference in Seattle. And there is the FreeBSD Summit in the Bay Area. Lots going on. Where's my bedroom? Hey? Hey? Can I go to my place? Are we having kitty trouble, Dan? Sorry. No worries. I'm talking. I'm walking, Layla. Forgot I wasn't muted. No worries. Hello, Layla. No worries. And uh, uh, Michael, considering that most people drop at the half of watching the video, can we do the honors at the beginning so people don't forget? Yes, sir. Let her rip. Okay. Please do like and subscribe. We know you're watching, but you're not subscribed. Dear 70% of our viewers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre Nick. Okay, today we have a special guest, Dennis, who's going to talk about Immunes, the integrated multi-protocol network emulator and simulator. Uh, Dennis, will you be doing a demo or just describing? Well, I wasn't thinking about, okay. uh, I was thinking about this, this will be a short meet and greet, uh, but Perfect. I, uh, but uh, whatever you want, uh, hey. if you want to see something, I, I'm, I'm able to show okay. it to you. Let's see where it takes us. You have the floor. Oh, uh, right at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I was expecting uh, more uh, things on the agenda, but uh, I guess I'm the main spotlight for today. <laughs> You're a star. I'm a star, yeah. <laughs> so uh, first, I'm not, I'm not sure uh, how many of you uh, heard of uh, Immunes, but uh, I... Carlo mentioned it to me, and I watched the the last weeks, uh, the weeks before vid video. Uh, I'm not sure who was the uh, who was the one who uh, who introduced uh, the the topic of immunes with with you guys, but I hope you're here today. Uh, if you're not. I will be talking to other people. Uh, okay, but uh, first of all. Uh, how it started uh maybe you know marco zetz uh he's uh, one of the author or the author of uh vimage or uh, vnet uh in uh free bsd uh 12 it uh, it entered the kernel uh of uh, free bsd so uh, uh he he started working with uh, vnet uh in 20 2001, two or something like that, and uh, I think he was working for Boeing Defense, or uh, I, I'm pretty sure it was Boeing Defense, and uh, they were uh, they were they needed something to uh, simulate or emulate rather uh, network stack cl clone the network stacking. So he he just pulled it out of, out of thin air and uh, created uh, this uh this for freebsd and uh after that uh it needed some uh graphical representation i'm not very sure uh, about details about this one but uh in 2004 he created a prototype of uh, immunes uh, and it was used for something like uh simulating uh, lots of uh different nodes for some stuff they did in Boeing. I, I'm not. I, I'm not sure what what was that, but uh, the main thing was uh, he was working uh, with the University of Zagreb, so for a uh, faculty of electrical engineering and computing, and uh, uh, it uh, it pro proved to be something uh, f good for uh, uh, showing uh, students how exactly network networking works, and it uh, pretty much pretty soon uh, incorporated in some of the courses i think maybe one uh, one course uh, at first and uh, it was uh, one of the main uh, so half of the university's students uh, went through that course so i guess some 500 
students uh, per year. Uh, so it's not something uh, marginal. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, uh, quite viewed tool, and uh, students students actually uh, are not fond of it because for now it it, it looks uh, all outdated and old. But uh, some of them uh, I like the charm of uh, retro style. But uh, yeah, I, I still like it too. I was one of the students there, uh, and I uh, I didn't even know what what, what it was. But uh, when I started to work, I also started working with uh, in University of Zagreb uh, when I graduated. Uh, so uh, the, my first task was uh, to uh, be the one of the developers of uh, and maintainers of Immunes, right along uh, uh, Marco and another colleague Walter. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, beside the, the student uh, and university courses, uh, we also ma managed another project with Ericsson uh, in Zagreb. Uh, they uh, had use of uh, immunes. They used it for some some testing of uh, their their nodes. They needed to test. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 25 IPsec uh, terminations, and they didn't want to uh, boot up uh, 25 routers and or you know, PCs or whatever they need to do. So they uh, had a, a good use case uh, using immunes. So we got money out of it. Out of it, it's not only something uh, uh, used by students and for uh, I don't know uh, uh, network. Uh, enthusiasts or something like that but uh, after a few years uh, that golden cow was depleted and uh, no more money from immunes and uh, it just uh, stayed uh, an open source tool which was used every year for our uh, students and uh, I had uh, other other jobs also as a, as a teaching assistant so uh, I wasn't very uh, so actually, Marco and Walter both uh, quit uh, working at university. So I was the only developer of Immunes, and I wasn't uh, quite uh, developing it. It was quite stagnant for some time. But uh, after quitting myself, I found I found time, and I actually loved doing it. With, uh, doing it. Uh, so I met uh, Carlo, and uh, he showed some enthusiasm. For immunes and some uh, some he had some great ideas uh, so now we're working together uh, he's actually uh, uh, two meters away from me so if you didn't know that uh, and uh, <laughs> so uh, we had some plans to make immunes great again uh, so sorry about that uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah, uh, we we had the uh, plans. We we also actually uh, still have plans, and we're working uh, quite fiercely on making it uh, better uh, and uh, on FreeBSD and both on uh, Linux. And actually, uh, as we're working, uh, we and at our job, uh, we're working. Uh, we're using Immunes, so it's not just like for fun. I actually have use of it. Uh, it's on Linux, but uh, uh, that's something uh, uh, we're uh, in need uh, NPLS. Uh, we're using NPLS, so we are not uh, able to use uh, FreeBSD. <clears throat> uh, I hope someone will uh, come and uh, make NPLS uh, for FreeBSD, finally. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, some... Uh, I think that's that's it. Uh, in the last year and and a half, uh, we had fun. Uh, we are doing a weekly uh, immune sync, and we uh, we we do discussions and some uh, uh, what we did, what we need to do, and uh, we try to uh, do something every each week. Uh, so uh, we have. Uh, great potential, uh, potentially uh, big uh, features and big uh, immune versions coming in the couple of 
uh, I would I would like to say weeks, but uh, it's possibly a couple of months. So uh, for someone who didn't use immunes, uh, I don't know if this means much to you, but uh, in short, uh, immunes is used to simulate or emulate rather uh, PCs, routers, or uh, other network uh, elements in, in the network. And uh, up until a uh, couple of uh, months ago, uh, it was uh, the uh, the scenario was next. You draw, uh, you use the, the GUI uh, to draw a topology. Uh, you click on uh, execute, and uh, sometimes later, a couple of seconds uh, later, you get a full blown topology, which you can use to uh, experiment or do whatever you like. Uh, of course, this works on both Linux and FreeBSD. Uh, and when you're done, you just terminate the experiment. And uh, if you need to change something, you need to uh, terminate it and restart. Uh, but uh, I am working on the feature to, that allows a live editing of uh, the experiment, of the topology. So when you start the experiment, you can uh, add new, new nodes, new routers, new whatever you want, to change, uh, delete links, uh, uh, actually what, whatever you need to do. Uh, so it need, it may, it can be used uh, for some other types of experiments, actually. Uh, and that's a great feature which needed uh, a lot of work and a lot of re, re, uh, refactoring the code. And I'm still doing it. Uh, additionally, I made made this uh, an, another feature. Uh, I made it uh, so it's actually it's saved uh, as a a custom configuration uh, in text file. But uh, uh, the new feature uh, needed me to make this JSON uh, JSON configuration. So uh, it's now it will be JSON configure. Uh, JSON configuration, which can be, of course, edited in text mode or uh, however you like. Uh, and uh, this uh, this will bring us in the future to something something else, which uh, which is a long time uh, in in planning, and that's a remote uh, remote execution of uh, and a remote viewing of uh, the experiments. So, uh, for example. We're uh, searching for uh, some students which will help us to make a, a browser experience. So uh, immunes in a browser, which uh, can be uh, more pretty, if you if you'd like. Uh, so uh, some students uh, will use it as a cool cool. Ex uh, it will be cool. It will. It won't be a uh, retro and old fashioned, but it will be cool, and someone will not uh, uh, be mm -hmm. distracted by it. Uh, and uh, of course, if it's remote, uh, we're we're thinking something like uh, we. Uh, I guess a teacher can run an experiment and uh, modify the, the the topology, and uh, a number of students can join the topology and watch it remotely. So this can be uh, uh, we're in an era of uh, Zoom meetings. So why 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 won't we have a, an immune meeting uh, and uh, do it uh, as a as a new new twenty uh, first century internet? Yeah. Uh, so uh, this I'm I'm doing this both on the FreeBSD and Linux, so it's in parallel, uh, and I want it to keep it that way. So I uh, I'm sorry I'm talking a lot uh, about uh, Linux, but uh, it's it's uh, fifty percent of my no worries uh, at all. <laughs> no worries. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to mention uh, why uh, FreeBSD is better than Linux uh, in this regards, and uh, so. Uh, I guess I have, we tried uh, thousand, one thousand uh, FreeBSD uh, nodes, uh, turning it on in uh, I guess a minute or something like that. It it it, it supports more than one thousand, but uh, it, this depends on how much uh, RAM do you have. But I'm uh, I tried running uh, I guess one hundred uh, nodes in my virtual machine with uh, two gigs of RAM, and it's quite. Uh, 
it was quite successful and fast. Uh, the only thing, uh, the, the only thing, uh, it's not working uh, quite as well in the latest, uh, in the newer version of uh, FreeBSD is terminating. So, uh, jail. Uh, we're using jails for uh, these uh, these nodes. So jail, uh, killing jails takes a lot of times. So I don't, I'm not sure why is that, but since uh, I think it's version uh, FreeBSD 12 or 13, uh, it's it's only getting uh, slower and slower. So terminating takes 10 times as long, almost as 10 times as long for termination as uh, for like uh, turning it on. And I'm not, I'm, we're not sure why is that. Uh, hold but, that thought. We discussed yeah. that a week or two ago and it's, more likely vnet jails as opposed to other types so we will discuss it shortly oh, yeah. so yes we we know we know go ahead yeah, okay but uh, uh <laughs> I, I found out just two days ago if i run uh the, the, I'm, I'm talking about my uh, virtual machine uh, so uh it's not as uh prominent in on, in bare metal but uh, on my virtual machine if i run uh in my background, uh, while loop with the sync uh, command, uh, it takes quite a lot faster to terminate the experiment. Uh, so I'm not really sure if that's a fix I'm willing to push upstream, but uh, this helps me a lot because I'm not waiting for 20 seconds for uh, three uh, nodes to terminate. It's done in one second. So uh very very weird uh, literally uh while loop uh while true uh sync uh done nothing else uh and uh, this this makes me this makes my life a whole lot <laughs> better so uh i i i'm not uh i'm not that uh into uh freebz source i'm not, I'm, i don't know really where to look uh, at this fix, so I'm not going to, but I hope someone will. And uh, this, uh, I, I mentioned this worked well uh, in FreeBSD, I think 11 and and uh, before that, this was quite fast, but now it's not usable uh, for large number for larger experiments. Uh, uh, in Linux, we're using Docker for containers. Yeah, so uh, Docker uh, is quite slower at, uh, so I guess uh, I didn't really do some benchmarking, but uh, it's uh, noticeably slower for uh, for 10 uh, nodes. Uh, you don't want to wait uh, 20 seconds to, to, the, uh, to run the experiment. You want to do it in uh, two seconds. So that's why FreeBSD is uh, better. Uh, uh, additionally, uh, we're using a net, net graph uh, for uh, uh, in yeah, FreeBSD uh, for uh, links and for uh, bridges. Uh, so we use ng bridge and ng uh, pipe. Uh, additionally, we use ng filter or packet uh, package n uh, for uh, some specific nodes, but uh, that's not, that's not important right now. Uh, on Linux, we use uh, vet pairs for uh, links. And that's a good thing on uh, FreeBSD. Uh, we can use, uh, if, if we want to create uh, an interface on a node, uh, we just use ng-a a face. Uh, we create uh, an interface, but uh, on... Uh, uh, on our uh, on Linux, uh, there's no way to create a single interface which can be later connected to something else. Of course, there are dummy interfaces, but uh, that's not it. So uh, FreeBSD wins in that case. Uh, I also wanted to mention a couple of problems in FreeBSD 14. Dot zero. Uh, so immune is unusable at uh, 14.0 because we had some bugs. So not, not we, but UnionFS uh, had some bugs uh, with uh, ZFS, uh, specifically uh, some, something about uh, rolling back uh, 
uh, some snapshot. I'm not sure what was going on, but uh, it uh, would cause a kernel panic if you would uh, roll back the the ZFS snapshot while the UNFS, union no, UNFS. Uh, so uh, if uh, UNFS was uh, mounted uh, on a directory that was inside a ZFS uh, data set and you rolled back the data set to a point where the where the directory does not exist, it would uh, make some pointer inside the, the uh, inside the node uh, uh, now, and when you try to unmount the union FS, it will just kernel panic, and that went fixed uh, in fourteen point one. Um, how heavy is your dependency on full union FS semantics? Would you get away with clones uh, for the scalable jails? Uh, yeah. Um, you, you can. Uh, there is uh, actually an option to uh, currently just specify uh, like uh, a directory a path where you would uh, have your uh, jail root, uh, but you should uh, probably not use uh, like the same path for many nodes because it would they would step on each other's uh, uh, toes. And uh, there is there are plans to make something uh, more. Uh, in line with just creating uh, clones on demand and uh, you not having to specify the full path. Yeah, additionally, there there will be support, uh, hopefully, for uh, ZFS uh, mm -hmm. uh, nodes, uh, nodes using ZFS, so uh, the directly making snapshots out of uh, some ZFS uh, data set uh, if you use and so that's hopefully uh, someone will do it <laughs> so uh, regarding uh yeah, jail about to shutdown say, times jan has a few um, things on those two topics go ahead most jan. of the times the issue why a jail isn't quickly going away is because something is still referencing it so the whole network stack and file system is optimized for normal operations, not for sh shutting down fast at the cost of uh, throughput. So uh, instead of keeping the, uh, double link uh, data structures everywhere, instead there's just pointers in one direction. That means that you can't quickly find the back references. So you have to wait basically for some everyone to drop their reference count. Uh, so it Instead, you have basically pointers you don't know where they are pointing from to you, but they're expected to uh, maintain an atomic reference count. Um, normally, the issues are that uh, there's still packets queued inside the interfaces, so bring down all the network interfaces uh, inside a VNet enabled jail, or at least move them out. And um, the other thing is to um, unmount the file system just has a lot of uh, stuff in them, and so which also makes sure that all of their um, V nodes inside the virtual file system are removed because unmounting just gets rid of them, so nothing should reference it because the processes are already gone, the interfaces are gone, so basically there's nothing left of the jail. Uh, normally, you get shutdowns in 100, 200 milliseconds or so. Um, if you run the full RC dot shutdown and you don't have any slow to stop services, uh, just just mentioned uh, the teardown process. Uh, uh, every interface which is created uh, is first uh, destroyed. Every process that's created is killed uh, before. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. unmount, unmounting anything, and then we unmount, and then uh, at the end, uh, jails are uh, jail dot uh, dash r r, uh, so they are but destroyed. Do you set the interfaces everything. to administratively down with if config interface name down? Oh, so sorry. Do you down. try to destroy the interface, or do you set them to down first? Because destroying them can be slow. Oh, no, uh, uh, we. Uh, destroy them and that's uh that's as slow as that gets but after that uh, another slowness uh, is uh, jail uh, dash r so uh even if you don't create any interfaces uh, it's still 
that part is still slow. So uh, I just create uh, 10 uh, PC nodes and uh, I just uh, destroy them without doing uh, any interfaces, without running any processes. Uh, the only process inside is, uh, is uh, I guess, bash uh, or init. Uh, so, so nothing is running inside, um, but uh, is, so. Is, uh, Dennis, is the shell inside of it attached to a, uh, a TTY terminal by any chance? Because that resource hangness does cause a lag in shutdown. So for example, if, if you have a cron job and you're shutting down and the cron job is not connected to a TTY, it will shut down fast. But if you have a JEXEC where you have a shell and that shell is now controlling the terminal, that one is going to be very slow. That's a very common bug. I don't know if it was historically there, but I can confirm that it is there right now. Uh, so because it has a reference to the TTY, so that reference takes a while to 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 shut down, and then it would print, you know, killed or exited or whatever. So, okay, so uh, do you have a TTY open? Uh, if uh, we we use Jexec to run commands inside the jail, so uh, if mm -hmm. uh, if Jexec Jexec open opens uh, TTY, it can it be open, not... but so uh, nothing else should be there, but. Uh, I mentioned if I run uh, sync uh, in the background, it works extra fast. So, uh, oh, so it's I I think it's not uh, anything I do uh, with the 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 jail itself. That's very interesting. Hmm. I mean, I guess we could run dtrace and see what's happening between the command the jail kill. Jan, do we have a jail kill? We should have a jail kill syscall, right? Uh, we have a jail remove jail through remove. the uh, jail yeah, set remove, with yeah, so, the yeah. destroy flag, but um, yes. Yes, the other yes, thing yes. is that triggers so, just the so semantics. We should see, yeah, so we should see between the jail remove down to the actual jail removal and see what's happening in between. And then do the same with sync and see what actually changed to understand the difference. No, not exact VE, but like see everything in the jail, not just the exact VE. Uh, so th that would be like a very nice process that Dtrace can help us there. I'll, I'll have a look. I'll have a look. And this is very, uh, you know, this is a friend that definitely, this is a place that Dtrace can definitely help us to understand what's happening in the system with the sync and without the sync. So just to repeat, uh, this mm -hmm. uh, uh, great uh, speed up is happening inside my is inside of my uh, virtual machine, but uh, mm -hmm. I also try this uh, on a regular uh, PC, uh, mm -hmm. and it's not as it's not quite as uh, large, so it's not ten times faster. It's two or three times faster, but it's still noticeably faster to to run a sync uh, in the background using one uh, CPU core and uh, and uh, jail dot dash r to 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 kill the 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 jail experiment the experiment jail. So uh, yeah, just just to to have some. It's not about my uh, virtual machine, so it's not that's not the problem. It's something else. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, indeed. Okay, makes sense. Well, I want to say thank you because uh, I actually used, I call it immunes, like in a very phonetic way. Uh, yeah, that, students, that's, that's I, how my students uh, from Croatia are, are also calling because it's spelled immunes. So why it's not. Exactly, immune. yeah. Uh, but it, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I asked Marco. Uh, how 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 should I pronounce it? So uh, he said, "Oh, we well, pronounce it however you want." So I uh, okay. But <laughs> immune sounds better, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I used it a lot to teach my students when it came to networking, and they loved it. Uh, initially, we started with with immunes, and uh, at some point, I noticed that we were on FreeBSD thirteen, but there was no FreeBSD thirteen images. There was only FreeBSD eleven images. So at some point I taught them how to do everything by hand, but we actually yeah. ended up using like EPR bridge because it was kind of easier to explain. Okay, here is EPR A, here's EPR B. These are the heads of a cable, right? So it was very, 
easy way of explaining. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we used it a lot in the classes and it was very uh, useful for the students to, to see how a network is designed. And there, there's a nice question at the bottom, which is like, how does it compare with uh, uh, GNS3? I mean, I, I honestly prefer this because it, it scales amazingly well. I mean, you could you could build a, a, a network with like 200 nodes of, you know, as if they are desktops and, you know, have a DHCP server here, a DNS server there, and it, it, it works amazingly. And it's been, it's been one of the best ways to explain to people why they should, you know, architect their networks properly. Uh, ironically, or coincidentally rather, uh, we used it today to 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 show a client on why they have a network loop. <laughs> so it was it was very nice to be able to show them how network loops happen. So yeah. I just want to mention uh, you were the one uh, talking about it last uh, last time. So. Uh... Thank you for uh, bringing this to uh, uh, to attention because uh, it uh, really uh, brings joy to my heart uh, to see it uh, used all around the world actually. So uh, I uh, we're maintaining the immunes.net site and I have Google Analytics. So and I just wanted to check uh, where it's used and I noticed it's used in uh, uh, Namibia. Uh, in France and uh, in uh, USA, I think uh, the most. So, uh, uh, where are you from? I'm from Armenia. My students oh, yeah. are Armenia. in Armenia. Some of them are in Europe. Like the, yeah, the, okay. some customers but, have yeah. Yeah, all around the world, and uh, this uh, this actually uh, helps my ego a lot because uh, I thought uh, not no one no one's using this, but uh, a couple of uh, professors or students at uh, University of Zagreb. So uh, seeing no, this I can, all I around the world, I, is, I, I, I can this. assure you, I can assure you that I've showed your I've showed your uh, software to even government agencies. For them to use products like these, I mean, after using what was the Cisco one? Oh my God, uh, packet. Uh, the, no, the, the packet. packet. After packet tracer, this is like magic, you know, because packet tracer is nice if you just want to do Cisco. But at this level, you're like, oh great, we don't have any Cisco. We just want to see how a network would react to something. And after it's 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 it's. I mean, government agencies, hospitals schools uh not schools rather universities i mean whoever i showed everyone is just loves it and uh, good to, to see that there's now 14 support because after the 11 we didn't see anything after the 11 support to be on the website so we ended up also teaching people how to use the command line directly but the okay. graphics was which was way better now uh, so, so i, so I, guess we'll I, I just to this. i just wanted to uh mention some stuff about the website so uh What's on the web? Uh, so the virtual box images on the website are uh, specifically made for our students in uh, in our university. So uh, it's easier for for us as professors or teachers to tell them uh, just download this virtual box image, run it, and you mm -hmm. have everything installed. Uh, but uh, what's really important uh, is uh, our GitHub. So I'm I'm quite active on GitHub and. Uh, each uh, each version is a uh, each new version is actually uh, used uh, in production. Uh, I'm using it there. Uh, I'm using it every day, particularly uh, at work, but uh, at home also. I, I like to play some, to to those features, new features I mentioned to test them and and stuff. So, uh, but uh, those uh, twelve point three FreeBSD uh, mm -hmm. images are. Uh, when I left uh, the university, uh, no one uh, was there to update. Ah. Uh, so uh, it just works. So the newest version is 12 or whatever. Uh, it just works and they, uh, the, the other uh, teachers are not really, uh, they're not really, uh, ah. They don't know how to use uh, immunes and how to uh, how uh, to develop, I guess, immunes. So uh, I'm 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 not. Uh, I left uh, them uh, with uh, the last version, which works. So uh, that's it. But uh, I actually will make uh, a new image 
uh, I had some problems with uh, FreeBSD 13 on VirtualBox uh, when uh, when I started doing it, uh, something with uh, X, XFCE uh, or I, I didn't, I, I, I couldn't make it work uh, on my uh, VirtualBox. So I just uh, skipped, uh, skipped uh, 13 and uh, when 14 came, I, I wasn't working in there anymore. So it's just stuck in 12, but I, I, I guess I will. I will make uh, fourteen point uh, two. It's almost out, and uh, upload it on. Uh, so just uh, for people like you who uh, check the versioning and see, oh well, it's the new version. Uh, I, I guess I'll give it a shot. Uh, I didn't. I didn't even know someone was using it uh, as a as uh, like that. So uh, thank you yeah. for uh, bringing um... this to my attention. Yeah, sure. I'm just wondering, do you have any kind of an internal IPC? Because I'm, I'm thinking since since Uncle Dave is here, uh, maybe we should use Phoenix to build the web version if there is an IPC. You know, I mean, building this with Phoenix shouldn't be that hard. Am I right? And uh, as, as a, you, <laughs> I love his reaction. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's more a question of time. It's It's not hard. It's it's uh, the, the backlog of other exciting things to do is huge, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, right? Yeah, because I mean, having this in, in a web interface, imagine like I could deploy it on a server at the middle of nowhere, aka Armenia, and uh, and then my students could connect to that. And like we, all of us, all of us could design a network together, you know, like that, that would be there because we currently we're doing like VNC or whatever, but like having it on a website, where you can log in and then start designing the network, it would be it would be very different experience, I guess. Yeah, so, actually, uh, ju just uh, for uh, to mention this, there's actually a uh, well, it's it's written uh, the the Muse GUI is written in uh, Tickle uh, TK. Yeah, yeah, Tickle, yeah. Yeah, so actually everything is written in Tickle. It's just a front end for uh, JEXEC and uh, Medigraph. Uh, and NGCTL. So uh, actually, there's a there's a thing called Cloud TK, uh, which works on Linux uh, actually, and I uh, it runs natively uh, runs uh, TK uh, applications, and I actually can uh, bring up uh, my immune uh, the uh, my immune application somewhere on my server in uh, Linux server uh, with this Cloud TK. And I uh, just last week tried it and it works, uh, but unfortunately there's no uh, this cloud TK uh, built for uh, free business. So, uh, but I, I guess it could could be uh, yeah because it's open source, so it could be uh, built. But I haven't tried it, uh, and uh, this uh, is actually uh, a regular immune, but in the browser. So you get uh, everything, oh. uh, everything you do, uh, everything you would do in uh, immune. So uh, opening uh, shells, uh, opening uh, terminal uh, exterm or whatever, uh, TCP dump, uh, Wireshark. Uh, th this can be done mm -hmm. from your browser. So you're not losing uh, features by running it mm -hmm. that way. Uh, and actually, mm -hmm. you don't need to uh, write a, a JavaScript application. You don't yeah, need uh, full so front-end developers to do this. Yeah. This is just... So uh, like, okay, sorry. Well, I was saying like, this is basically a TK to JavaScript transpiler where the whole TK widgets are now in the browser as DOM. Uh, actually, uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, it runs uh, VNC, uh, no VNC uh, server, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, you log in as... It's basically VNC in inside of your browser, and uh, it oh, runs okay. uh, in it runs on a, a window manager, and uh, it opens your application uh, in TK. So uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, porting it. Uh, Immune uh, needs just a few lines of changes uh, to run it wow. uh, inside of it. So I I could show you uh, what needs I, I could show you the link of uh, cloud tk so you can just try it if you would like so i just paste it this is actually amazing the the, the cloud tk thing looks really scary <laughs> yeah but i know right i mean it's a, it's a vnc sockets. vnc over web sockets <laughs> yeah yeah but no, i mean i love the idea vnc uh 
because it's just TCP over uh, put a, just tunneling that over web sockets is not uh, hard and has been done by multiple projects. The question is, what kind of experience do you get when you uh, the command line interface inside of a web HTML5 JavaScript VNC client? I yeah. thought, why don't you implement a terminal emulator in, uh, and just send the text instead of a video stream? If you want to access a, t a TTY. I, I guess uh, that's your uh, that's your Christmas project, Jan. Excellent. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, we're working. Uh, well, I'm I'm planning to uh, make uh, uh, in Muse CLI because uh, I also made a couple of years ago. I made a, a proof of concept uh, CLI. So. Uh, you can make you can run uh, in terminal uh, immunes uh, mm -hmm. and uh, write commands. So new node PC, new node switch, uh, connect switch, connect this node with this node, and uh, it uh, works well as a proof of concept. So uh, and uh, this was actually one of the things that um, made me think about doing this remotely, so uh, using the browser. But uh, it's also a big project, and the first thing was to uh do this uh, json configuration do this live edit mode because it's it's a bigger better feature and the next feature is uh, uh removing uh, the gui from the backend so uh sure. disconnecting both of them so you can get uh cli which can be used as a uh, as whatever you like. So uh, you can use mm -hmm. netkit to connect to uh, a server on uh, immune and run commands, however you like. So uh, that's sometimes in the future. Mm -hmm. I was also wondering to ask, can you run immunes in a jail as well? So now you would have basically nested jail. Uh, so uh, immunes actually uses UnionFS. And you cannot mount uh, UnionFS inside the jail, so that's uh, uh, one of the problems you will have if you try to yeah, mount it in a jail. Yeah, but you could have a helper on the host do it on your behalf. Yeah, you could, but apparently, if or you try to you do it, it will take. Or you could use uh, ZFS if you can make use of ZFS for that, because ZFS can be delegated. Yeah, I mean you you. you can make it work, but uh, not unmodified, like you just get clone and uh, yeah, by running it inside a jail, it won't work. Yeah, because yeah. th that would also be interesting, right? Because like I could have a single bare metal where let's say I have a jail per student and then yeah. they run their <laughs> each separate immunes, you know? So that would also be very interesting to, have to yeah. see. Also, yeah. uh, it would be really cool if jails could be run uh, with non-user, non-root user privileges. That's also uh, it would be a kind of a neat feature. And uh, that's almost also... done, by the way. Oh, nice! What? Yeah. Almost done? Yeah. Or yes. you convinced Jamie that it is not a crazy idea? <laughs> uh, no, that's that's <laughs> almost done. That's a good one, Jan. No, it's almost done. Uh, I mean, the hard work was done on the truth part a while back. And then at, at some point, uh, one of our customers requested that on the honeypot side of things. So mm -hmm. one of my team members has been working on it. And he's like, why is this subsystem not working? So he's basically almost done. If someone is, shout, is shouting during the meetings, it means it's almost done. So, <laughs> so hopefully uh, I'll me, have an answer. Uh, to that work? You can share? Uh, I think, let me see one sec. No, it's internal in our Git. I think when we're done, then we're upstream. Uh, also, uh, one thing that's, uh, that would be nice, you mentioned like a, a jail uh, per uh, student, and you just give them like control and they can do whatever they need inside mm -hmm. those jails. Uh, it would be also nice to integrate that with uh, like the browser uh, UI version where you can just uh, give students uh, the permission to like view the whole network and inspect uh, some commands on all the nodes, but uh, only get mm -hmm. uh, uh, shell on their, uh, on their uh, hosts. Ah, I see. Yeah, that would definitely But that's be like yeah. a future feature. It's not coming soon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean, the, the idea of just having the, 
Yeah, the idea of just having the TK interface in the browser is already like um, a, a, a killer feature. You know, it's it 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 makes collaboration a lot easier um, <laughs> than like you know sharing the screen of a VNC that I have of my VSD <laughs> desktop. It's a whole other mess, you know. But like just hey, hey guys, here's the link. The password is one. Thanks to Dexterism and. Uh, like okay, now everyone can see what what's happening in there, even if there's no ACL, you know. That, and eventually that, that, they, can, they can they yeah. can edit the topology themselves, so you can say exactly uh, and just add add uh, a new node and connect them and edit them however mm -hmm. you want, and uh, some yeah. teacher can uh, uh, grade grade them <laughs> uh, whatever they do. So uh, this is a future feature, but uh, as I'm working almost alone, uh, it's it's not a near future feature. It's a it's a little bit fast, uh, far further yeah. uh, feature. Yeah, well, well some of my students, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, some of my students love actually, to use sorry, them, but, uh, about where you mentioned uh, on Linux, uh, there is a possibility to, to run Docker inside Docker. So uh, we actually yeah. uh, had uh, as a proof of concept again, uh, Immune's Docker, which uh, just uh, deploy Immune's immune inside of docker mm -hmm. and you you can yeah. you could uh, <clears throat> connect to those and uh, run commands run immune as you would without having to install anything so that yeah, just i just wanted to say that so thanks there uh, were three I quick mean, questions on my... uh, you maybe punch through those when you have a chance yeah yeah i was actually going to go there one of the oh. things i wanted to say is my students love immune so much i'll ask them if Hey kids, do you want to do open source development on a very old language using a very old widgeting system? I'm I'm sure some of them is going to be like, oh so yeah, sorry. sure. We're it's not old; it's mature. It's proven. <laughs> it's proven. <laughs> stable. Stable. Yeah, and stable. Stable. Like stable. Yeah. And by the way, uh, new, new TCL uh, Tickle Nine uh, just uh, a few month uh, last month uh, came, so uh, it's uh, a better version, better stable version. So just just saying. I'm waiting for the Mac OS one to be updated. So finally, Mac OS can work fast. Mm, so yeah, uh, the, bringing us to the questions, um, how does it compare to GNS3? Uh, how does it compare? Have you uh, heard of regarding that? Regarding what? It, uh, it, it also simulates a network with a whole bunch of requested OSs. Maybe you've seen it, maybe not. Yeah, 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 but yeah, uh, yeah. what does it mean? How to how does it compare? Uh, what Oops. were we, what were we comparing? Uh, same feature set, same speed uh, to spin up, same management. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what what what's your if uh, whatever is important to you? Actually, uh, when we were working with uh, Ericsson, uh, we had uh, we had a scientific article uh, uh, where we proved that immune is better than some other current uh, network simulator slash emulators, uh, but that was 2014 or something like that. Uh, and uh, just a second, I'm, I'm, I think we're, we're, we were running, uh, we were, uh, yeah, we were uh, comparing uh, immune with Mininet, uh, GNS3, uh, and at that time, uh, yeah, uh, GNS had uh, some communication overhead as uh, J jails uh, were using, uh, NetGraph were, uh, was using a zero copy as a communication overhead. So uh, GNS were uh, using something uh, with two copies. Uh, so uh, it was, uh, they had uh, more, a bigger, bigger footprint, and uh, it had full virtualization of uh, their nodes. But uh, I, I'm saying that was uh, more than ten years ago, so I'm not sure how it's running now. Uh, and uh, GNS also uh, didn't have link emulation, uh, but I guess it can be. It it might have been. Uh, changed by that but uh it needs to be redone this experiment needs to be redone so we can i guess uh, 
do the same uh, experiments as we did 10 years ago just to see uh, how it's going. So we, we actually had, uh, I, I guess, a thousand uh, 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 routers uh, boot time and uh, termination <laughs> time. Uh, and we couldn't actually uh, compare it with GNS3 because uh, we couldn't uh, boot thousand uh, virtualized images uh, on one PC. So uh, something like that. Uh, but yeah. You're that, going to be very happy to know that I have a, a hardware with two terabytes of RAM. So we <laughs> might be able to boot <laughs> a thousand Cisco uh, virtual machines there. Can you imagine but, how, many, uh, how much immune nodes that could be? Uh, it's <laughs> vir virtually limitless. Uh, yeah. Uh, At so, some point with 32 bit uh, or 31 bit jail IDs, Start oh, looking yeah. really small. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's our next feature. So 64 bit uh, jail uh, IDs. So, uh, so yeah, I guess uh, there are. Uh... There's a non joke use case for 64 bit jail IDs, and that is that you, or uh, even 128 bit or something, you could make them strongly monotonic. No, I mean, at 64 big jail IDs, I can finally assign one single IPv6 address <laughs> in my <laughs> slash 64. <laughs> yes, uh, Slack, uh, Slack uh, uh, stateless uh, auto configuration using the jail ID. There you go. <laughs> uh, another quick question Is a FreeBSD port or package planned? Uh, or will actually, always be a VM? Uh, there, oh, there's also uh, on our GitHub there is a port slash uh, package, but it's not uh, it's not uh, maintained maintained. Uh, and but uh, the last time we tried that was a couple of months ago. It was working for the latest version, uh, so, but it's not in the in the ports in the in the ports three. Yeah, but it's not. Port okay, three, cool. Yeah. Noted. That's the question. Okay. So uh, that that's something that can can be done uh, after I finish this, this big sure. uh, features. Yeah. What's the last question? And finally, this might nodes? be a super obvious question, but what kind of nodes are supported? Jails, VNet jails, Beehive guests? Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, the nodes are actually just, uh, well, we, we install a, a regular, uh, we call it root, uh, v, v, virtual root. Uh, it's just a, uh, uh, it's a folder uh, which is uh, used for uh, as a let's reference, I don't know, uh, to create all the other nodes. And uh, inside of it, uh, there are some features such as uh, some applications such as uh, uh, FRR or free range routing, uh, so uh, router support. Uh, uh, some something else, uh, reg regular applications such as uh, Bing, uh, TC route, uh, trace route, uh, TCB dump, and stuff like that. So, uh, you can simulate uh, regular uh, PCs, uh, you can simulate uh, hosts. So, uh, for example, you can uh, enable uh, some services such as SSH uh, or uh, FTP or whatever, like uh, there's uh, IPFW uh, support. Uh, so whatever you can do on your FreeBSD, you can you can run on those jails. Uh, additionally, uh, as I mentioned, the, as I mentioned, there are uh, packets, uh, packet uh, generator node and uh, packet filter node, which are uh, in, uh, NetGraph. Uh, Nodes which are specific for uh, for uh, FreeBSD, uh, so no 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 uh, Linux support for those. Uh, and uh, might be mistaken, but I think package was also for working fine at like PKG install whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, of uh, you can uh, you can. Uh, there is a, a tool which uh, which is called PKG. Uh, uh, dash immunes uh, which uh, immunes uh, which installs uh whatever you want inside the the this virtual root so if you need any package from the ports uh, from the freebie reports you just install it inside you have it uh, at the everywhere next... yeah yeah so but if you uh, as carlo mentioned you you can use uh, your own <clears throat> uh, custom uh, virtual root so whatever you want because uh, yeah, our our classes we were using OpenBSD's uh, 
uh, open BGPD for uh, for for oh, okay. teacher outing, and um, it worked fine. We were also very sad to know that OpenBSD's Open uh, OSPFD was not ported to FreeBSD. Uh, but I mean, that at that point we already had BGP up and running, so it was like, okay, kids, this is how dynamic routing works. So we we were yeah. like, okay, done. FRR has uh, open uh, yeah. OSPF and BG, BG, BGP support, so uh, that's that's cool. Uh, we used to run uh, Quagga, but uh, it's not longer maintained as before. So mm -hmm. uh, FRR, FRR is uh, quite stable, <laughs> also. Uh, so uh, it's uh, also it runs on Linux, so uh, we can uh, easily. Do you? Yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. Do you support GERD2 as well? And uh, what mechanisms do you have in place to quickly template infrastructure nodes on the network? For example, a DHCP server per virtual uh, broadcasting uh -huh. domain or DNS forwarders, whatever, basically dump down nodes, which are infrastructure and just there for the experiment to be possible and not something, for example, you will let students mess with intentionally? Oh, uh, well, is is it installable on FreeBSD? If it is, it, it, it can be uh, put inside of the node, so... Uh, yeah, sure. How are the nodes... Can, basically, how do you support different types of nodes? Because having one virtual root directory, you UnionFS mount, to each node uh, is not a good fit for having different types of infrastructure node and the normal node oh yeah uh, yes yeah, so, so sorry uh, I, I wasn't uh, yeah I, I get it now uh, there uh, there are also uh, additional configurations for uh, each of the nodes so uh, you can define uh, uh, each specific node uh, its own uh, custom configuration uh, custom startup uh, custom uh, uh interface configuration or what, whatever you like so uh it's pretty basic so uh on each uh jail start or each node start uh there's a uh shell script which which is run okay. so uh yeah JX you can run some random shell script that yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the jet Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, oh. there are plans to to implement some uh, RC stuff uh, later in the future. But uh, for now, it's only uh, when you start the jail, uh, run this script uh, which I uh, wrote in your uh, configuration. So you can run. Uh, I mean, one... uh, thanks to SSLC, it's quite easy to write uh, RC conf stuff from a shell script. You just run SSLC, and it works. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's uh, not implemented doubt, yet. <laughs> Doubtor, if you want, you can take over the screen to show. Okay, I will uh, then show things he's uh, saying. Yes. So uh, just yes. talk and I'll show. Uh, so, sorry, yeah. uh, just one more thing. Uh, someone mentioned uh, Beehive and uh, Virtual Machines QM or something like that. That's also something uh, I have planned uh, in the future. So you, if you want, uh, instead of running the jail, uh, you can uh, run the, the Beehive uh, uh, Virtual Windows Machine. Host. Or yeah. Windows host, or whatever you like, or Linux host with a, a new immune uh, topology inside. So uh, that that's my plan all along to run FreeBSD, running uh, Linux, running immune. So that, that's something in the future. To, I was also going to ask. So, for example, in your IMN files, you have this very neat uh, network config, which is like you know hostname router interface, blah blah blah, very Cisco style. Uh, you know, and I'll just uh, share my screen until Doubtor shares his. Uh, I'm gonna click yeah. on I need that. to step away. I'll leave the recording going. Uh, Andrenik, let me know if you need anything managerial. Okay, thank you Thank so you, much Michael. for this Are tour. You... Take care. I'll be around, but I've got a few fires to put Thanks. out. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Yes. So here is the one that I'm very much interested in. I'm wondering if this part can become a software of its own because the OpenBSD guys they created OpenBSD NSH which is a very neat shell it's literally a shell where it looks like come on buddy you can do this okay there we go 
NSH, where it looks like, um, where is the, where is the example? Yeah, GitHub repository. And what they created is basically a, a, C, a, a shell written in C that has something like this, right? It has like manual VLAN. Now you can configure VLANs, right? And the, the process of what they created, why can't I find the documentation? I'm gonna kill myself. Uh, God. Examples, there we go. Okay, let's say home, great, this is amazing. And this is what it looks like, right? Very, very Cisco style. And it's like, okay, uh, host name, CRAD, DNS rule, DNS local, et cetera, et cetera. Interface, interface. I was wondering if this part of your code can become a portable network shell for free BSD. Because I mean, you already have 99% of it's done, I guess, you know, like this is converting to a jail, right? Uh, no, uh, you're you're uh, you're you're wrong. Uh, this is a uh, reverse. Uh, this is actually uh, from uh, Quagga uh, VTY shell. So uh, this is actually uh, as it as it is inside of uh, the the VTY shell. Uh, so that's a shell for uh, FRR. So this is strictly copy pasting. Uh, uh, it was easier for uh, for Marco and he he made uh, the dot. IMN file to just have this uh, uh, this uh, part of code part of uh, oh. configuration be used as a Quagga input for uh, configuring uh, the rest of the in the, in the interfaces. So uh, if you want to run this, you can just uh, spin up your uh, FRR uh, with UI shell and uh, just type it, <laughs> copy paste it. Does that apply to this one as well, which is type host? Uh, well, not on uh, uh, on routers. Uh, routers are uh, for, first we run uh, with UI shell and uh, basically copy paste uh, this part of the configuration. But hosts uh, need translating this uh, from uh, this with UI shell code to uh, if config. Uh, or, and uh, other commands, yeah. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, the new configuration, the JSON one, uh, is actually the reversed. So uh, uh, I made uh, this everything uh, just uh, plain uh, key value. Uh, so interface, uh, interface this, uh, IP this, mm -hmm. uh, just for just make my life easier when uh, uh, porting to to VTY shell or porting to Linux, just so I can make. Uh, uh, something basic uh, and uh, mm -hmm. actually there is a I also have a plan to make uh, I, I guess something uh, as a, a shell script uh, which can make take your immune topology and uh, spit it out as a, a list of commands you need to do to, uh, to run it so that would make uh, my life the, easier the list of the list of commands is cool, but do you know what would be cooler? And the whole community will send uh, hugs and kisses and wine and beer is if you can convert it to an rc.com syntax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can just put it in a shell that... and run the shell. Let's start. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the first step. local, and there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the uh, yeah. the hard part would be to, and the one which would be really valuable is to not just start from an empty system, but to inspect the system, compute the delta, and then apply the changes so that you can declare the intended network configuration uh, and have it converge the current configuration to the con uh, specified one. Um, so basically, yeah, you declare which interface is created by which cloner uh, or which type of net graph they're supposed to be under that name, then create them, hook them up together, and you specify topology and then the ability to walk and identify parts of a topology which are mentioned in the config and then change your state. But there you're getting into stuff like, yeah, hated Linux style automations, which don't even work where they are well, like NetPlan or something, which is- Oh God, oh God, oh God, sorry. Yeah, I exactly, guess. because that's, that's I, kind of what- Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to remove it at that. the end of what you're proposing, Antrenek. 
um, a, a YAML file specifying the network configuration and a daemon which uh, watches over you like network manager D. And the moment you change something, it will wait a few seconds and then undo that. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, I hate that so uh, exactly. much. It's, uh, Every time I configure it, some theory, static IP on my interface, it just reverts it. Mm -hmm. So especially, yeah. Yeah, what I'm hearing right now is, well, you have a lot of work to do, and uh, and <laughs> and I'm the only one. Oh, basically, uh, the Carlo helps a lot, but uh, we are the only ones doing it. So, uh, give us time. Give us uh, more time. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Can we get I, I, thirty I, hours? I, 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 impressive project. I, yeah, it's it's a very impressive project. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Because I mean. You have no idea how much time it saved me in teaching. Because what I would usually do is like there's this drawing app in Apple, Mind something, and I would open that and I'd start drawing circles and lines and or I would go to like draw IO and start designing a network in here and it's it was like a nightmare. How do you run how do you run this topology? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like this. Okay, so I can see it. How do I have it? You know. <laughs> but but yeah. That, then with the music, it became much easier. Of course. Uh, that that's for sure. That's for sure. You know. I mean. I I guess we it's 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 a free BSD project, which means we always have a marketing problem. So I guess it's it's the same scenario here. If more people knew about it, maybe they would start contributing as well. You know. So uh, we'll 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 definitely tr start to. Uh, move the word around like hey there's an awesome project which works on freebsd and linux maybe you should start having a look oh uh, on the linux side i also had one another qu question what what is the images of the of the template or are you running this custom one of your own uh, it's literally just a docker docker image uh, our own uh, we made uh... This this director this uh, repository you're you're in right now we have a yeah. uh, Debian twelve uh, current uh, so uh, it just uses this as a basic uh, basic uh, node uh, it has uh, all the all the, all of it's installed so uh, you can see that that's just a minimal version but uh, the full version has uh, FRR and uh, mm -hmm. all the other tools needed for for running so. That's it. Nice. Okay. Amazing. Very nice. So Very nice. actually, it's open source, so you can do whatever you want <laughs> with it. You can add a new, yeah. new one uh, if yeah. you need. Uh, actually, uh, we had some problems with uh, Mac. Uh, Mac couldn't run uh, Immunes inside of its uh, uh, virtual. Oh, it's called UTM. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, my my professor uh, uses uh, Mac, so uh, he he built the ARM version of uh, Docker uh, container. So uh, I think uh, it's 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 in here in the root to Linux. So uh, yeah. that, that's that's cool. The FreeBSD version works fine, by the way, if I remember correctly, on ARM. I don't see why not. Yeah. It's FreeBSD. Yeah, because I we I remember. I mean, I got, in theory, you know, installed every. UTM is supposed to have uh, nested virtualization support in FreeBSD. Uh, so Beehive should work no. instead of a FreeBSD guest on the latest Mac OS on a recent uh, M something Mac. Um, by the way, uh, Jan, they do have a CPU type limitation. So for example, my MacBook Air is not able to do nested virtualization, but the Pro is able to do nested virtualization. I think it's not uh, by uh, pro or non-pro, but by generation. Oh, that's and true. Yeah, because I have M1 and one is not other supported, one. I think, but M2 yeah, yeah, yeah. does because it's basically the ARM architecture version, which has to be high enough for that to be possible. You're but basically you lacking a handful of instructions and uh, interrupt controller support and so on. Uh, why, why do you need a nested virtualization? virtualization? Yeah, for that. It does not uh, use uh, a so... VM inside. No, it doesn't. But uh, in uh, today's Tuesday, in Thursdays, we also run the Beehive call because we also do Beehive development. <laughs> We're also now playing with Beehive on ARM. 
yeah that oh, that okay. that got pushed i think like three months ago to current and uh, there's not a lot of users and we're trying to see how beehive on arm works michael is using it at his house already so uh, that's also another project that we're kind of trying to get involved more in uh, uh, and I wanted to ask also, let's see, do we have any other questions? Yes, traffic generators. Are you using T-Rex or what's your traffic generator? Uh, it's literally just uh, uh, an NG Netgraph uh, uh, node uh, made by, I think, Marco also did that, uh, which uh, literally just... Uh, you you give it uh, bytes and it spits out bytes uh, however you want. It's not uh, smart generation, smart uh, smart package. It's just uh, we wanted to try uh, some uh, uh, high tr high throughput, uh, so we need some high throughput. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't think it's here. Uh, I will send you a link in the chat. If you, you need to, you can run packet gen or something inside of the jail, can't you? Yeah, but uh, this was uh, needed uh, for uh, Ericsson when we were working uh, when we were working for Ericsson, and they, they specifically had some some uh, uh, requests regarding the packet generation, and we mm -hmm. made so uh, not we uh, Mark made this uh, node, and uh, when uh, we started uh, stopped working with uh, Ericsson, uh, it just it was. Uh, Okay, we, we're just going to open source it and uh, put it inside. Uh, yeah, it's uh, pet, uh, it's source as an ng source. Pet mat is pet pattern matcher, so it's like mm -hmm. a filter. And uh, ng source is a source. Of, obviously, it's a source of packages. Uh, oh, and uh, it, yeah, uh, that's the only way, uh, reason why uh, it's not something uh, smarter. Uh, so uh, we wanted to have a, a minimal uh, minimal number of nodes, basic nodes, so uh, we don't overwhelm our students. Because as you know, uh, students are uh, easily frightened by uh, unknown things. And that's why uh, they're using immunes uh, in, in, uh, as, a, as a GUI, uh, as opposed to using jails uh, from the terminal, because uh, yeah. uh, lots of them are afraid of uh, typing stuff uh, on the black screen. So immunes oh. is great for that. <laughs> I, I know the pain. Now yeah. the Can I ask what was it with Ericsson as an Erlanger? You know, here I mean, is Dave still here because he's also an Erlanger? No, Dave is gone. Yeah, okay. Uh, they, I'm uh, Ericsson had uh, an IP core which needed testing, and uh, oh. we just uh, we just had uh. They just used immunes for uh, running uh, some basic topologies uh, using some nodes and uh, trying out some uh, connecting uh, some some nodes to their their own. I don't know what what their nodes are called CPI. I don't know. But uh, uh, one time they they showed us uh, an uptime of our uh, immune experiment of their immune experiment. There it was like uh, two years. Uh, they haven't uh, <laughs> shut down. Uh, it's just it just worked, and uh, they used it to I, I, I guess ping stuff and uh, send users through our uh, topology and I don't know what. Uh, our job was just to uh, be. Uh, providing them with support. So uh, they had a bug, uh, they wanted to install something, they wanted a specific kind of node. Uh, we didn't ask uh, much questions why, we just, uh, well, is this okay? Yeah, okay, it's, it works, uh, bug, <laughs> bug fixed, great. Uh, see you next time and uh, radio silence for a couple of months. And then, uh, are you okay? Is everything working? Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, <laughs> we'll get in touch if you need anything, okay. Great, and then this uh, IP core is uh, no, no, just delete the uh, skip that to do list. Uh, it's not, it's not important. So uh, yeah, because that's like from nine years ago, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're in the process of uh, making uh, things new. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, I, I wanted to make uh, Carlo do the do the work here and show you uh, what he has. Uh, if you don't have any questions. Any more questions? Uh, I think we don't. I mean, yes, you can also ask questions while I show things. I just wanted to show a few things he mentioned earlier. 
and especially to okay. Antrenik, uh, because uh, you used the uh, immune before and you might have experienced uh, pains with having to shut down uh, the topology and just to add like a single node and then again start it. Uh, one second, uh, my screen is misbehaving. Empty. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I sharing. Yeah, oh, one second. <laughs> uh, I shared the screen. Uh, what? No, it's not. No, it's not. I, for a second, I thought you were using Window Maker. I, I will shut the sharing down. Uh, I had a, a VM open, and it just Zoom decided to jump onto that uh, window, uh, that uh, monitor, and uh, take over everything. And I cannot get it. Stop. Wow. Uh, one second. I will try once again. Can you see now? No. Nope. No, it went. Yeah. It, mm. Yeah. Something is hmm. software. X yeah. Xorg. <laughs> yeah. The future is here. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is a bummer. I I will uh, disconnect my other monitors and try it on a single monitor because it worked earlier. I remember a few weeks ago. Uh, so give me a second. Uh, this. It's not old, is mature. I'm going to tell everyone that when they ask me why I use Pascal. I love, I love that quote. It's not old, it's mature. Let's see if I'm able to share it now. Uh, share desktop. Can you see now? Nope. It's now we are still only with the mask. Uh, are you are you sharing uh, your screen or the? Yeah, I'm machine? sharing desktop one, and it's not okay. showing anything. Yeah. Uh. Well, I wanted to show you. Uh. Well, well, you can just start the topology in the not in the master branch, but in the merge uh, branch, and then add the uh, new uh, nodes while it's running and modify them, uh, add interfaces and everything without stopping. So mm -hmm. uh, it uh, it would be a nice thing to show, but yeah, uh, Zoom's not playing along. Uh, and also uh, wanted to show you a few things. Dennis, maybe you can share. Uh, on Linux, or? yeah, yeah, okay. or either on Linux or on previously. I can run it on Linux. So, it's... did you mute yourself? Okay, uh, so, so share. So what are you seeing when I share my screen? We see a Briefly blank screen. screen. Oh, well, this, this sucks, actually. <laughs> I, I can easily zoom. blame Zoom. Oh, yeah. wait, we can, see, we can see your menu. Like Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, that's what I wanted to show you, my menu. Uh... <laughs> oh my god, I think Zoom is dumb. It's doing it the other way around. It's sharing the Zoom things and not sharing the non-Zoom yeah. things. Well, it's supposed to do the opposite usually, right? Share yeah. the non-Zoom things and hide the Zoom things. Oh, great. <laughs> uh... Wait, someone left. He accidentally closed the Zoom, I think. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, I figured I instead of even... doing a stop uh, sharing, he did. He did leave yeah. Yeah. Uh, It's uh, it's knowing how Zooms Zoom decides to just jump over all over the monitors. Maybe I will try uh, once again to share my desktop. Maybe this time it will work. Yeah. Uh, can you see something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we can. can we the... can. Ask a okay. logo. Ah. Uh, uh -huh. Now you can and see. So now it works. Uh, okay, so I cannot see the top of my screen because of Zoom. Uh, <laughs> it's really helpful. Of course. 
uh, but yeah, uh, I will. Uh, I can see the important stuff. So I just started the topology without editing any nodes, and I can plop down a few PCs. Uh, this is much faster on FreeBSD, by the way. And maybe let's say uh, uh, switch. Pause here. Uh, why? Experiment pause. Oh, oh yeah, I will uh, pause the execution, for example, right now, and uh, resume it, and it will just uh, add those two uh, interfaces and connect it, uh, connect them. Uh, and uh, it also auto configured the uh, IP. And let's say uh, I uh, let it ping. And I will uh, actually, I will ping 22, which is the next address that will be added. And if I add it, it's just here. It started responding. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, really help helpful when you're uh, you know, working on uh, topology incrementally and not having to shut yeah. down everything. And uh, earlier, what uh, Jan asked uh, about custom uh, like stuff. So in uh, Linux, uh, this custom image is uh, just like a Docker image. Uh, and it actually allows you to specify some Docker arguments uh, like uh, CPUs and stuff like that, but it uh, doesn't really matter right now. And uh, you can actually uh, enable uh, custom configuration uh, here and for example, create uh, some uh, configuration and uh, let's say bin sh uh, uh, my file. And uh, if I uh, start it, I'm not sure which oh. node that was. Was it PC1? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's here. So uh, this is like currently the way to uh, customize uh, the nodes. It's a bit unwieldy, and uh, in future there are plans to make this a bit uh, easier in uh, Linux. It's what's not... the switch? What's the switch on Linux? Uh, which switch? Oh, oh this, this switch. switch. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It's just a bridge uh, interface. So uh, bridge if interface. I uh, let's see. Uh, I will do it like this. Uh, I've been at namespace. So it created the, the net namespace for the mm -hmm. uh, whole experiment. And these are the nodes. So if I hover over a node, let's say the switch, it uh, in the bottom left corner, I don't know if you can see it, it says N3. Yes. So oh, I can yes. uh, IP net namespace exec uh, this yep. uh, shell. Uh, I need to run into the root. Uh, and uh, I can see uh, this uh, uh -huh. uh, N3 is the bridge. N3 is the bridge, and these are the yeah. uh, uh, the virtual Ethernet pair uh, endpoints VTH, from the yes. PCs. Yeah, from the PCs, they are added to this switch. Yep. Uh, as yep. you know, a master interface uh, is the switch at uh, the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and on FreeBSD, it's uh, just uh, the That's NG right. yeah. bridge. Yeah. Uh, with its hooks, yeah. Uh, yeah, also, uh, there are on Linux uh, a bit more uh, pains than on FreeBSD for some features. For example, like uh, there is this option, a direct link. So uh, in Linux, uh, maybe Dennis, do you want to, to explain that or should I? So in Linux, uh, every uh, link between nodes is actually another uh, bridge. So actually, when you connect this node to a bridge, so let's say PC3 to switch one, there's actually uh -huh. a hidden switch uh, between them. And uh, if you right click configure, you can uh, set, for example, loss uh, rate or something, uh, bandwidth yeah. or some other limitation. And it's actually running TC on that uh, hidden bridge. Uh, that is the mm -hmm. link. And on FreeBSD, uh, that is- the TC uh, as in traffic control. Yeah, traffic control. Uh -huh. And on uh, FreeBSD, that is actually ng pipe. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and uh, this direct link actually gets rid of that uh, hidden uh, bridge. Mm -hmm. So if you run it like this, it's actually directly connecting uh, via via virtual Ethernet pair uh, from PC3 to switch. But the problem with that is you cannot really disconnect an interface uh, those two interfaces while keeping them uh, on both uh, nodes. 
because you cannot separate a virtual Ethernet pair on Linux. So and, now uh, you can't disconnect PC1 and PC2 from the switch because PC3 is using the direct link? Uh, no, no, no. I cannot disconnect PC3 from the switch without destroying uh, this uh, uh, E1 interface ah, uh, on see. the switch. Or, or if I connect the two PCs together, I cannot disconnect them while keeping uh, both interfaces uh, on PC1 and PC3. For example, if I, uh, oops, if I uh, did something like this, uh, I will get rid of IPv6 addresses. Uh, so if I did something like this, uh, if I had it uh, be direct, I would not be able to disconnect it from PC, uh, mm. this uh, link okay. without uh, destroying interfaces. And on FreeBSD, that's not really a problem because you we're just creating a, a NGEI face and, uh, and using- uh, be netting it to connect. the, yeah, jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So I there see. are a bunch of uh, stuff like that, uh, which are, you know, it's similar, but different enough to be, a bit painful to work around sometimes. I see. Yeah, and uh, of course, Wi-Fi interfaces have pain. <laughs> you uh, can't, uh, wait, 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 wait that's, that's new. Um, um, wait, that's new. There is a Wi-Fi support? I mean, you can, you have external interface, which you can give to yeah. a node, and uh, you can just specify which interface that is. If I set oh, it to my Wi-Fi interface, I, I I never used that. I mean, I saw it, <laughs> but I never used that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there is stuff like that, uh, which has some stuff you don't encounter. You know, you don't think about them before you encounter encounter them. Uh, but yeah, you should totally give those nodes a look. Uh, my favorites are like external interface and. Uh, the one I asked uh, Dennis uh, to create, uh, this is external NAT. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one just uh, creates a virtual Ethernet pair, gives one side mm -hmm. to the PC, and another side stays on the host. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it so configures, uh, yeah, it configures IP, table to, IP tables to NAT the traffic coming from this PC uh, to the outside. So you can but, just and like... On and on FreeBSD, it would do it with like uh, IPFW. Uh, v yeah, I think it's IPFW. Right. IPNAT. Uh, IPNAT. Well, with IPNAT. Uh, oh, that's, okay. That's literally one command. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you should play a bit, maybe create some uh, topologies uh, and uh, contribute them to the examples or maybe your own repository or something. It would be nice yeah. to see what people are using and uh, teaching other people uh, with. And the create bugs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, does anybody have any questions? Maybe for Dennis. I'm I'm good. I mean, I I what what you guys have is already uh. Enough magic for Beautiful. me to, to 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 get my job done. Yeah, it's really, it's really, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to take really any good. credits. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, Marcos uh, Marcos project. Uh, he created this. Uh, then uh, Walter joined, and I, I I'm the last one to join uh, the immune team. But uh, I I'm staying uh, as the main developer currently, and uh, immune is my <laughs> my child, and uh, I don't want to. Uh, lose it, uh, and I want it to be used by uh, on all the people uh, who who need something like that. So it's good to uh, spread the word. Yeah. So uh, I I hope someone uh, will tell it to to their friend, to their friends, to their friend, uh, and uh, I I see a jump in my. Uh, traffic on, on GitHub and uh, and on issues uh, raised. Uh, additionally, if you want, you can just send me an email or an issue or whatever whatever you want. Uh, if you have questions or uh, features you want to, to be implemented in the future or uh, sometimes uh, uh, later than the future uh, or sooner, uh, I'm uh, quite fast i would be faster but you know i uh, have a real job to do uh so uh i i would like uh for a day to to last more than 24 hours but uh 
sorry, <laughs> uh, immunes can't do that. <laughs> uh and uh, i i'm i'm really grateful for uh for this session uh, i didn't expect uh, this uh, uh this to last so long and uh, to be so uh interactive with you guys so uh gr great job and uh, for making me feel better <laughs> and thank you thanks thank a lot you. yeah thank you dennis Uh, one more thing, this uh, is my favorite topology, actually. I run it every day when I come home. I don't have, uh, like, home internet. I use my phone, and my laptop uh, is connecting uh, to the phone, and I just uh, net the... My headphones died. <clears throat> uh, his uh, headphones died. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, oh, oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, um, you connect your phone to the net. What is this? Uh, oh, it's saying hello? something about volume control. Yeah, no, we can uh, hear can you. you hear me? Okay, uh, so I cannot hear you, but Dennis is telling me you can hear me. Uh, so this is my uh, favorite topology. And uh, so I have no uh, home internet. Uh, and uh, this is just connecting to my uh, phone and uh, nothing, everything that is coming from the uh, internet interface on my uh, laptop. And I just plug it into a switch at home and all my PCs work <laughs> like that. When I come home, I enable the internet using immunes. Yeah. Dog fooding. So I cannot hear you if you're saying anything. <laughs> They're all drilled and uh, very happy you showed them your favorite topology. Nice. Okay, I'll share the screen and uh, let's continue and see what else we have today. Uh, okay. What do we have? I have questions to dear Dan. Is he? Yes, Uncle Dan is still here. Great. And then Matthias has not a topic, which is a state of the union. No risk presenting. It will probably be streamed. Oh, it's not a topic. Okay, then I'll go to that one first. It's not old. It's stable, proven, mature. Okay, that's a very nice t-shirt idea. We'll add that to our t-shirts for our next events. Um, Matt is going to talk about previous OCI containers. Great. And this is happening in the Netherlands in November yeah, 9. Yep. Are, is anyone going? Um, not physically. Wanted to. No <laughs> flights. Right, uh... so that's nice. We also have Bram talking about how he does BGP and DNS on OpenBSD. Very nice. I love that. Out of all the three letter acronyms, I think BGP, DNS, and BSD are the best. Yeah. And we also have uh, Stefan talking about uh, GOT, which is a Git alternative. Or rather, a Git is alternative the right word because it it can you, you can you can use it with Git. It's a it's a Git front end. No, it's not. No, it's a I Git like no tool. Idea. It's a Git like tool. Yeah, but it is still compatible with Git, which is good. Uh, so yeah. Okay, great. Uh, good luck to our friend in the Netherlands. Uh, I hope you have a lot of beer. And uh, what's the what's the famous sausages in the Netherlands. I hope you have a lot of that too. Uh, any other things? Yes, I have questions to Dan. Dan, are you around? No. You're not. Okay. So you're still at uh, the other calls as well. Okay. Uh, Ask your question. We... Ask your question. Okay. Uh, Libra and MS. I deployed it for a customer. We've been very happy. I was wondering, since you also run a good number of either Libra and MSs or I'm assuming things in Libra and MS. Um, the polling, I mean, the default is like 300 seconds, which is 
or it was like 600 seconds by default. I lowered it to like a minute because I need data. I really need data to see what's happening in the network where it's a flat network and everything is crappy and nothing is working. And the list goes on of how terrible things are. Um, I was wondering, do you do like real-time analysis? Is there a way of using Libra NMS as a real-time analysis tool? Or is it still to be considered like, hey, this is just for once a second monitoring kind of thing? Because th that part is a bit still confusing for me. You can go in and look at a port on a device and get real-time traffic out of it. Measured yes, every second that. or every two. Yeah. How is that not what you need? Um, what is it you need that it's not giving you? Good point. So I know that SNMP can't do that, but what I would really want it to have is a way to run like TCP dump remotely. <laughs> Because because the, the the port traffic is able to say that hey this is you know you we have twenty megabits a second you know but like doing TCP dump remotely would have been really nice I guess yeah I guess there's no way to do that over SNMP no yeah and uh, another one is is ping and SNMP the only supported options for monitoring it is what. A ping and SNMP are the only options for doing monitoring. I mean, it does monitoring over ping and it gathers data over SNMP. Are there any other protocols in there that it can use? You, not that I know of. Um, okay. If you can get a script to run and run, if you can get SNMPD to run the script, you can collect anything you want. Oh, okay. That's nice. But that That's doesn't support nice streaming, thing. right? No, basically you can pull back metrics. You run you run a script and it pulls back some data. Um, if you, if you look at some of the, uh, let me see here. If you I'm looking on my blog and looking for SNMP extends. No, let's try. Basically, let me go over here and show it a different process a different way. I collect stats from my jails on Apache, Bind, DHCP, fail to ban, MySQL, etc. All those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And oh, that may not be what you want to bring back. But those are just scripts that SNMPD runs. Mm -hmm. So it'll tell you how many emails have been sent in the past five minutes, for example. I see. And that's done over Postfix? No. Um, there'll be a script that runs on the host mm -hmm. by SNMPD. Mm -hmm. And th there's many different I hosts, many different scripts available. Um, I see. Let me see if I can find a better. Wow, is that a query per second? That's amazing. So it can parse the binds uh, query log and see what's happening in there. That's amazing. I'm also very happy to see that you have a very decent number of uh, DNSSEC traffic. That also makes me very happy. Yep. So. I don't, I can't find examples of it right now, but I'm, oh wait, get. Another one, there we go. Deeper NMS. Yeah, there it is. Get, get that langel.org. Look for Libra NMS extends. And there's a whole bunch of scripts in there that I've pulled down from Libra NMS and modified them to make sure that they run fine with FreeBSD. Um, wow. And basically all you do is you get, you add these, to the, click on snmpd.conf and that's how SNMPD. you get them invoked. 
Uh huh. Oh, I exact okay. fine. So this is a term, and this is the script. Yeah. So okay. the exact bind bind is what the application is called, mm -hmm. and it's application. Don't don't think of it in terms of postfix as an application, but it's what Libra and MS calls it. Mm -hmm. And yes. it, it, it's their agents type thing. Libra NMS agents. I think that'll bring it up. Yes, I can. Uh, extensions, yeah. Uh, Libra NMS extensions is what you want to work, look at. 30 par third party extensions integrations. Is, is this I'm in the right place? Yeah, I think so. Libra and MS extensions. I want, I want to go to a machine where there is no like private info. Let me try to remember if I have anything like that. Again. Yeah, the course which, the course which has no information. It is new. Okay, so let's do that. I think it's in here. Applications, yes. And then I can do Apache bind Ceph, previous yeah. DNFS server apparently, and. So Maybe those are all done. Those done. are all that information is all gathered by the concept known as SNMP extends. Uh huh. And, uh -huh. and it's just a way for you to collect additional data. I see. Okay, great. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. What else did I want to ask as well? Uh, networking wise, is it okay to see something like this? Ports with error? Oh, just a second. I don't have my screen on. Apologies. Uh, there I'm on my phone. Post... Just a second. Just a second. <laughs> I got it on now. Several errors per second that looks very high. That's errors per second. Those are yeah. all connected to Wi Fi, by the way. Like, you know, shitty Wi Fi, like TP links. You know, like if you can go in and see the graphs, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think so because I don't get errors like that. I don't no, get it in my that, house as well. Yeah. That's not collisions though, is it? That's errors. No. No, no. Yeah, collisions those are like is different. Errors. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what causes that. I can't help you. I don't know enough about it. This one works fine. I'm very happy to see the dependency graph working. Uh, uh, Michael Dexter also. said he needs to close his machine, and I don't know what Michael that means. Michael Dexter said I need to close my machine, as in he needs to, if I cha change over, the recording stops. Uh, Michael, is it okay if we finish in two minutes? Because he needs to take his laptop away, I guess. I think that might finish. So oh, yeah. I, think think I hope to see all of you in uh, Zagreb uh, on EuroBSDCon 2025. Hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. I remembered my worst question. Yes. I could not get to any of the, you know, teleport things to work. What are you using? IRC, email? Are you using teleport at all? Are you asking me? Yes. No, I'm not using teleport. Uh, I didn't really follow the question at all. Sorry. I thought you were asking no someone worries. else. No, no, no worries. I was just I wondering if you were using any of these notification channels, and I could not no. get anything to work. No. I tried OS ticket. I tried. I did not try mail yet, though. I'll try that. Because I didn't figure out. But yeah, if you're not using... I'll, I mean, it's totally fine to just go in here and do a refresh and see what's happening. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, those were, those were my my questions. Thank you very much. This was very helpful. I'll just go back tomorrow at the customer site and deploy some more things there. Um, let's so see how's it gone? <laughs> it was going that. good. We also did an in, in immune uh, demo. I then see I that. It's beautiful. Yes, it was all fine. 
Okay. Uh, Michael, should we do closing if there's nothing else? And since you well, also need to leave. Did Dan take off? Dan had, or they, no, you have a Libre NMS question. If it works for you, I'd That's love to done. end the official yeah. call we, and call it good. I, and you can I talk all night. It, <laughs> I asked it and he responded. Oh, fantastic. So I have, uh, let's see, 1948 UTC. Any final thoughts, questions, you name it? Nope. Great. Yes, well, thank good. you so much, Dennis. This was fantastic. And this was uh, amazing. Please join us more often. Yes, and it sounds like there are, you know, we're, the, you have a lot of mutual interest here. I mean, yeah. Gee, I've Dennis, you've discovered uh, your users here today. Go ahead. <laughs> I've been eavesdropping uh, on Carlos uh, when he was uh, on uh, on this call. Uh, I, I've been sitting right Excellent. next to him sometimes. Ah. So I've been here the whole time. Don't be shy. Don't be yeah. shy. Okay. See you well, next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, fantastic, everyone. Uh, and Antrenig, would you like the honors of one last catch the last crowd? Yes, sir. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.